Hello and welcome. In today's flight, we will discuss stalls and spins, the hows and whys behind them, and most importantly, how to recover from them. I'm going to start up the plane while we talk. Okay, we are first going to discuss stalls and how they occur. We will then see how they are related to a spin. A stall is essentially the point at which the plane stops flying. In a stall, we no longer have complete control of the aircraft as we would in normal flight. This has nothing to do with an engine or compressor stall. In fact, these are totally different things and are only related in that they share the same name. So what causes a stall? You would probably be tempted to answer low airspeed. However, this answer would technically be incorrect. Now, speed is a factor, don't get me wrong, but this is not what causes a stall. A stall occurs when air can no longer flow smoothly over the wings. We will see this in more detail in a little bit. So low air speed does not cause a stall. I can give you an example to help explain why. Right now we are taxiing at a low air speed, and there's still air moving smoothly over the wings. I know this because there is no buffeting commonly experienced in a stall. So why is this? What causes a stall if it's not low airspeed? The answer? A stall is caused by excessive angle of attack, or the angle between the elevation of the cord of the wing and the oncoming airflow. Here's a diagram showing the oncoming air and the cord of the wing. The angle in between, represented by the Greek letter alpha, is the angle of attack. Alpha is traditionally used to represent angle of attack. We did not experience any buffeting while taxiing because our wings cores were pointed into the oncoming air. Thus, we are not stalled even if we are still on the ground and at a low airspeed. By now you're probably thinking, wait, then why does everyone talk about an aircraft stall speed? Yes, I know about this, and I'm getting to it. But first we must understand how angle of attack, airspeed, and lift are related. It is fairly obvious the faster a plane flies, the more lift it can generate. This is why planes must accelerate down a runway in order to take off. Lift is due to the shape of the wing. Nearly all wings have a curved upper surface, as seen in this diagram. As air flows over the top of the wing, it conforms to the curved shape and is forced downwards. And by Sir Isaac Newton's third law of motion, something must then be forced up, in this case, the wing. This is lift. Now, if airspeed was the only thing determining how much lift you get, then each aircraft would have exactly one cruise speed for traveling in unaccelerated flight, i.e. not changing direction or speeding up or slowing down. To pitch up, one would travel faster, and to pitch down, one would travel slower. And to some extent this is true, and is determined by the aircraft's trim. However, we obviously know that we are not limited to this kind of control when flying the aircraft. To go up and down, we have elevator control. And this is where angle of attack comes in. There is also a direct relationship between angle of attack and lift. This too can be explained by Newton's third law. Air will hit the bottom side of a wing with positive angle of attack. The wing will force the air downward, which in turn will apply an upward force on the wing. So you can see now, angle of attack generates lift. And you would probably guess that the more angle of attack, the greater amount of lift there will be. And you would be right, to an extent. Here's a graph of lift versus angle of attack for a specific airfoil. You can see, at 10 degrees, the wing begins to stop generating as much lift as fast, and the optimal point seems to be around 15 degrees. So, to make things clear, both airspeed and angle of attack create lift. Lift in both cases is created by forcing air downwards, which, in turn, will force the wing upwards. And so, we can now say that a wing will generate a specific amount of lift at a specific airspeed at a specific angle of attack. Getting back to the topic of our elevator. Our elevator does exactly one thing in our plane. It changes our angle of attack. As we previously discovered, a greater angle of attack created more lift. When we pull back on the stick, we increase our angle of attack. This is because our elevators rotate leading edge down. Air hits the top surface, pushing them down. Because the elevators are behind the CG of the aircraft, the aircraft and its wings rotate up, which increases the plane's angle of attack. As we learned, as the angle of attack increases, so does lift, and the plane pitches up into a climb. Assuming it has enough airspeed. Yeah, here comes that airspeed thing again. Remember I said a wing generates a certain amount of lift at a certain airspeed and at a certain angle of attack. If the plane does not have sufficient airspeed, more angle of attack will be necessary to achieve the required lift. 
So you just keep pulling back on the stick, right? Well, remember how that lift versus angle of attack graph leveled out and then dropped off at the end? Yeah, about that. That's when the plane stalls. A stall is caused by excessive angle of attack. More specifically, it occurs when the air flowing over the wing can no longer remain attached to the upper surface. This causes separated, highly turbulent airflow behind the wing, increased drag, and decreased lift. You lose lift because the air over the top of the wing is no longer forced downwards. The air hitting the lower surface is still forced downwards, however. This is why the lift does not drop all the way to zero in the angle of attack graph. To better understand this, look at these diagrams of airflow over a wing. Right now, the wing is at zero degrees angle of attack. The wing is still producing some lift due to the curved upper surface and air moving downwards as it comes off the trailing edge. But because it does not have any angle of attack, this isn't much lift at all. As we increase the angle of attack to 5 degrees, the airflow over the top of the wing has to pass downwards more than it did before. Also, air hitting the underside of the wing is deflected downwards. This all works to create more lift. The same applies for 10 degrees, so this is pushing the limit the angle air can turn. As we increase alpha past 10 degrees to 15 degrees, something interesting happens. The airflow is no longer conforming to the upper surface of the airfoil and has instead separated. The separation zone is all turbulent airflow, causing high drag. At this point, the wing is still producing lift, but remember our graph has begun to drop off. The same occurs as we increase to 20 degrees, but worse. The separation zone is larger, and we have lost nearly a third of the lift we had at 15 degrees. So, why can't you fly in a stall if you still create lift? Yep, you guessed it, it's that airspeed thing. The less airspeeds you have, the less lift that can be made, as we discussed earlier. The excess angle of attack stalled the wing, creating the separation zone creating drag, which in turn slows the plane down, and thus less lift is created, and in all likelihood the plane will begin to fall out of the sky. This happens rather quickly. What's interesting is a stall occurs at exactly one angle of attack for a given wing. That is, a wing will stall at the same angle of attack every time. Our wing in the diagram stalled just after 10 degrees, and our SU-27, this is about 20 degrees. In the SU-27, the current angle of attack is displayed together with a G-meter over here on the left-hand side of the panel. In the F-15 and A-10, angle of attack can be read as the difference in degrees of pitch between your aircraft's nose and velocity vector, as displayed on the HUD. Note that angle of attack is not the same as your pitch ladder. You can be flying with 20 degrees pitch up and still only be flying with 5 degrees angle of attack. Angle of attack is always referenced with the oncoming air, not the horizon. This is one reason why the American heads-up display would be useful in describing the angle of attack due to the presence of a velocity vector. So, we have now stalled a hypothetical plane. What do you do? With all the previous discussion, the obvious answer seems to be to lower the angle of attack back to that linear zone of the graph where the wing is installed. And you would be correct, but you wouldn't believe the number of people who would just continue to pull back on the stick in a panic when they discover they're losing altitude very rapidly. When you lower your angle of attack, you allow air to flow smoothly over the wings and once again return the plane to a controllable state. Because the air is now in a smooth flow over the wings, it is once again passing over your control surfaces, giving you control of the aircraft. Lowering your angle of attack usually involves putting the plane in a dive. This will also allow you to pick up airspeed you lost in a stall. Which brings us back to airspeed, again. So I'm sure you're dying to know by now, what is stall speed? As you fly faster, more lift is created. As a result, a smaller angle of attack is required, and conversely, the slower you fly, the greater the angle of attack that is required. Stall speed is the speed at which the angle of attack required to maintain required lift just exceeds the maximum angle of attack of the wing. 